each of us specializes in their craft. So I head up the cutting department, someone heads up color, there's specific someone for doing some styling, and we also have someone that's uh, in control of the makeup. And so the best thing about us is that we're about all about collaboration and putting our ideas together. Right? So anything that sort of happens in the, uh, the hair world sort of passes through one of our hands, and then sometimes it's a big collaboration. Okay. Um, my background is Vidal Sassoon uh, trained. I started in Canada, which is where I'm originally from. I was actually a creative director there as well. And um, even with my career at Sassoon's, I was doing some stage work and some stuff, but I'm always really shy and completely get intimidated, no matter how many times I do this. So it always feels fresh. It always feels like the first time I'm doing it. So thank you so much for coming. This is my model, Joy. I am going to be doing one haircut for you guys. I'm not a big fan of pre-cutting, so I know I only have 30 minutes here, so I'm going to kind of try to move through this quite quickly, which will be nice, I guess, for you guys, rather than seeing very slow three sections. Um, and I kind of just want to approach this uh, like the way I would approach sort of a pixie cut and really thinking about the balance. This is your buddy who's just joined us here, right? And just, just overall balance, and I think some of the, the tips and tricks for me is uh, specifically around where you start. Now, I know, she, you know Joy already has shorter hair, so it's much easier to put a shorter hair on when they already have shorter hair. That always makes me feel comfortable. I think the scary thing is, is when someone's got like longer hair and you're somehow trying to manage the right size and length. Um, so just some, uh, I guess some tips for approach. Um, is to think one about the sectioning pattern that you're going to have. There's a couple like key focus points on the face so that when you're looking at the face, you're trying to make sure there's an area for you to be able to cut that shorter haircut and making sure that it lands directly in the face. And this was actually something that Vidal himself actually told, told me and it took me a while to understand. There's this little pocket right here on the face which is like the apple of the cheekbone which makeup artists really work on. This area right here is probably one of the most important areas when you're trying to size up someone's face for shorter hair. And so when you're thinking about shorter haircuts, you're not thinking of one size fits all. You have to think that maybe someone needs a large, someone needs a small, and someone needs a medium. My approach with uh, these type of haircuts is to sort of think about the sectioning pattern in less of a horseshoe, which is what you would probably do for men, and more about working with the point and almost like a, a slightly curvilinear section that works alongside the parietal ridge. This bone is super important when you're thinking about how top, how the top is going to move on the head. Sometimes when you've taken this section too high up, I can try to describe it as like when you're creating sections for a haircut, a lot of it sometimes feels like the way you would dress a body. So this higher the section goes up, it feels like you're almost dragging the pants up on the haircut. This can sometimes, in a guy, make them feel very round, almost like you've actually put more weight on. When this section comes up above the parietal ridge, what you're going to start to see is a lot more movement and sway. When that section sits below the parietal ridge, what you're noticing is there's a lot more gravity and weight, so the top sits more static. So when you're thinking about the top, you can adjust the section pattern based off of specific movement that you'd like to have to one side versus the other side or keeping it symmetric. What I've just done through here is I want to take it just slightly above because I actually want to remove some weight. My approach is two, two things. One, to start from the back and work forward in order to provide enough softness through the front in order to keep the shape soft and feminine. And then in order to come back and actually remove weight here and leave a lot of this softness through here. So for me, it's, a, it's really about doing two things. Okay. I'm gonna start now. All right, does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Any questions so far? That's all. Mm -hmm. So you can see the sectioning on both sides here. We did try to get her to perform as even as possible, but that was kind of like a working process. So I'm just gonna push your head just slightly forward. Okay, and I'm just gonna start right from the back and I'm gonna be working with like a, a graduated shape through the back area. And then as I start to approach the sides, I'll start to get into more of like a, a layering pattern, okay? I hope you guys are able to see this. I'm gonna pull up my pants and just off the side right there. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a palm to palm. 
and you'll kind of see me doing these like little stances, and this is kind of part of our cutting curriculum where we put a lot of emphasis on body position and just kind of like putting yourself in a place in order to get the best result with your technique. Okay. So as I take each section, I'm really just overdirecting to the previous. I'm trying to leave some weight through the top area. And that's just important, I think, for shorter hair. Just because, it, you know, with something like this, it's not that she has an extremely flat head, uh, but you do want to have some contour and shape in the back. And, you know, I think, I think that when you, especially when you do shoulder hair, anytime you do hair, you know, you're not just cutting it for joy. You're cutting it for the other people that look at her and compliment her. Oh, that she looks good from the back, not just from the front. And so profile for me is kind of like always such an important part to think about how you're pushing the hair in order to create you know, something that's more complementary to the face. So really, just as I'm working here, you know, I want to kind of like just pay attention to the little weight line and I want to make sure that it's rounding up as I do it. Otherwise, as my section starts to curve up, it can provide a lot more length and weight and actually make the haircut start to get heavy at this point, which is one of the disadvantages that you have when you're working from the back. Is that by the time you start to get into this area, you have to almost force yourself to start to move it to the sides or start to make sure you're turning your fine. Otherwise, what generally starts to happen is you build up a lot of length. This area gets extremely heavy and then you spend a lot of time texturizing it. Side here. And then as the section comes up, we're still using our guide, but we just want to make sure that we're lifting that section almost so that we're seeing like a, almost like a 90 degree off, you know, that section where the bridal ridge is, and then working back down into our graduation. And I'm not necessarily worried about Joyce hairline at this point. I'm not feeling like I want to go back in and start to design any of that stuff right now. Although, you know, if this was my first time cutting her hair, I would have paid absolutely super all the attention I possibly could to those, you know, those demon areas. Because those can be the make or break points in the way something might hug the back part of the head. What about you guys? What do you guys like to do with shorter hair? Are you doing a lot of shorter hair? Sound on that? Yeah, I do quite a bit. Mm -hmm. People are more open, I think, for it. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of crossover between men's work. You know, Angel here is like the men's barber supreme guy here, right? He has his own company. And it's it's so interesting to see how, you know, the, the onslaught of like barbering and the education that's out there, and then also the crossover, you know, for women's hair. And now we'll just start to move into these areas of here. So guys, I want this to be as like informal as possible, so if you guys want to talk to me, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> or laugh at me. Otherwise, I'll start to get into some really awkward story. Also very entertaining. Yes, yes. <laughs> She's already like, absolutely. <laughs> so I think sometimes we just kind of, we, we grow with experience and we, we almost can part this place. <coughs> so I'd love for you guys just to, to tell me a little bit about what's scary about it when you do a, a short haircut, especially the girl who's just nodding. I'm going to call her Sally. <laughs> Not Sally. Sandra? <coughs> Meg. Meg. Meg, very close. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, what's, what's scary about it? the obvious. You're not liking it, starting, putting it too short. 
I think she, I think it's just the starting point, honestly. Kind of customizing it to everyone's. Right. And do you feel like I'm use many different approaches? Either? No. Just one. Yeah. And does it work all the time or just sometimes? Probably sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. And is it more based off of one side of the head versus the other side? Not a balanced thing? No. And I think something important about a short haircut is like, and you already pointed to this, obviously she has already a short haircut, so it's mm -hmm. easy to go there. The problem is when you have somebody with long hair like yours yeah. and they want to do this. Something that I learned <laughs> in a hard way when I was a kid in Spain is that somebody came over with long hair and asked me to do a short haircut. And actually I went and did it because I was so stupid at the time. And then she came over the next day crying and uh, basically she did it because she got upset with the boyfriend, no? And I uh, wanna, because he liked it. So something that I always tell people is like, yes, you can do that and I'm more than happy to do that. But I want you to take some time looking at pictures and, and, and determine what, how far you wanna go. Because I think that gives them the chance to like, get prepared for it. Like mentally, you know, they get more, uh, you know, ready for it. That's, that's been my experience. Because they just jump on this kind of show her and somebody that doesn't. The other people, you got a lot of short hair. What do you think? They come in twice and they're still thinking about it. I just say, you know, to that point, let's just do it. Does that feel like it's a one opportunity? Like if you say no this time, she might go somewhere else? Well, I think you can tell that they they really want it. Yeah. And that they really trust your stomach. Yeah. Trust your instincts. We've all been in situations like Anto has described. I'm, I'm, uh, I think it's really important to um, make sure that the first people complimenting the, uh, the look that's in the chair is the people that are in the salon. Mm -hmm. So when I used to work, I actually worked in Spain for four years with the beta and uh, it was a really difficult place in order to uh, do anything besides really long hair. And they had a, a very strong uh, belief in their aesthetic. This was kind of during the Facebook years, so you didn't have the social media presence that I think we, we have today. And uh, I remember like my very first cut was a bob, and it was considered quite extreme. And I flat ironed it, and the girl had said to me, is this what you consider you to be It was really hard, tough one. Now I kept that, you know, doing what I was doing anyway. That's just the way I like to work. But I do think that, you know, when we were working in the salon as a team, I would let the staff know, you know, during our team meetings in the morning, who is coming in and what changes were going to be occurring that day. And it was important because I knew that, you know, if she was getting her hair cut off, probably the first person she might see would be the first person that would make her secure, her mother or her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Two people that are gonna have this connection to this person that's gonna be, oh my God, what? you don't look like my daughter anymore. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna hate on you. Or my boyfriend or husband's gonna be like, you don't look like my wife anymore. So depending on who those people are and how secure they're able to make them feel, you have to be, you know, kind of setting them up in a way to kind of build that confidence around them. So we still let like the whole staff kind of be super aware of what was coming in, what was going to be done that day, and say, look, I've got, you know, Esmeralda coming in. She's going to be getting a, a really short haircut or a bang today. One of you guys needs to come over and compliment you while I'm doing it. And it, was, uh, it wasn't that, you know, like, it doesn't matter if it looks bad, just come over and tell her she's a good look. Everyone was doing really beautiful work there. But so much of it is just first impressions of how people feel. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like trying something on for the first time and uh, not feeling confident. And then you wear it a couple of times and people's eyes adjust. And all of a sudden, everybody loves, you know, what you're wearing. And I noticed that a lot of times, especially with, like, you know, bad haircuts, 
there's sometimes really bad cuts or things that went too short, six months later turn into like, you know, the look they really, really love. Almost like a round graduation approach, except you're really just trying to lose the corner and the layer and the graduation where they connect. Okay, and just fall back just behind the ear. See, as I'm working, I, I like to like, like comb the hair back into place because I want to see if I need to come at it a little shorter or tighter and make those adjustments, obviously using your guideline, but also understanding that when the hair starts to get this short, you, know, you are working off a landscape customize as you approach. Okay, so some other things I don't allow, especially when something a big change, you know, it's like I don't like my clients closing their eyes when I'm working. It's a big thing for me. I'm like, I don't want any surprises. <laughs> I, I, I do remember you asked me to do this, so I don't want anyone like this <laughs> in a roller coaster. I came in and asked me for this, right? And I, I think that that partnership uh, is something that I would like tell all the young people to focus on. Focus on building up like a, like that partnership with your guests and your clients. So you're working together rather than like you providing something for them. You know, they come and see you. There's an explanation, a consultation. This is what I can do for you at this point. This is what a six month plan would look like if you wanted to get there. This is my advice. You know? And I think when you make it personal. You know, with guests, uh, when something doesn't work out, it's offensive to you and to them. And so it's that detachment, uh, which is so hard to do, so hard to do. But it's important, I think, to make sure that clients feel that there's this openness. Hey, if it doesn't work, go home, come back, we'll sort it out, even if that means growing it out. That's important, and it's hard. Something that you did, and I kind of see you doing, and nature you just come into it, and I like is that you're like combing the hair back into the place to see how kind of kind of it's behaving. And I noticed in the past for myself, you know, I used to like cut the hair and drop, no, and and, and I think you lose a lot of learning when you just cut and drop. It's like when you color hair, you know, like you see the color, you learn by doing it and seeing the results. Sometimes if you just don't do that, then you lose the learning that it happens as you cut it. That's a good point. I I, uh, I think I learn every single time I take a snip because the mm -hmm. hair, it's it's cooking, it's bricklaying, it's craft work, and so anytime you lay something down, like even beading or so, like my wife is um, uh, she's a textile artist, so 
even the, she talks about the mark that the stitch makes every single time, even though the imperfection of it is actually what makes her really beautiful. When you get something machine stitched, it does it, it actually costs less than something that was handcrafted really for that reason. And I think for you to fall in love with your stitch, you have to put the stitch in and watch it. And when you, you know, you do it, you just, you just start doing it really quickly. But I do believe like, you know, water, sometimes I'll put a little bit of like, little product in the hair just to, you know, allow it to move. Water is an amazing styling product before it becomes permanent. So it's really mm -hmm. good. Did you just leave and then just come back or am I just see people I was standing back, back there so I could couldn't see. see. <laughs> okay, so approaching the top, um, I'm gonna do this bias technique, which is like one of the things that you can just do like to anybody when you're working with a short haircut because it's gonna give you a really nice base. I'm going to approach it with two things. I'm going to approach it with this little layer from the top just because I want to flatten out some of the weight. Sometimes your pixies can get a little cake plus eight. You guys know what that shirt is? Uh -huh. I wouldn't really have that, but do you know what I mean? It's, and so when we're thinking of how, uh, like, you still have, uh, you know, a pixie, some sort of shag, and some sort of bob as being the staples for haircut and fashion. So those are the garments and pieces that people go to stores and buy. It's recognizable pieces of items. Designers work with that because if they expected people to wear shoes on their ears and call them some new trend, it's not gonna work because nobody's doing it. It's not an item that you can just take, so you have to work up to that point. So pixie cuts, your bobs and your shanks are all those like staple pieces, like a black skirt, t-shirt, a pair of jeans. I'm just making that up. But you guys understand what I mean. And so. When you're looking at fashion and trend, what you're looking at is how has the pant changed? It's still covering someone's legs, they still put it on, but what is it that's different about it? Oh, it has accessories. Oh, it's been buttoned up or it's got beads through the sides. What you'll notice as well is the overall like shape. Is it big, is it flat? And so that's kind of what you're trying to do with hair. You're trying to pay attention to how fashion has changed the lines and you're trying to change the lines as well. So at one point it was really cool to have a lot of volume up through the top right now it's really cool to have the beach waves and flatter looks and more weight through the bottom and that's just how it changes and it changes very slowly so you have to pay attention so what i'm going to do through here is i'm just sectioning off the back area i'm going to connect this back okay. what we're going to do is just follow that same graduated angle and i want to do it from here because this is going to be the high point of the head. So I want to pull my guy in from here. Once I've connected, I'm just going to lift that guy. Okay. Now, if you wanted to do like a Mia Farrow and work into a shorter fringe, you could take that angle, make this the longest point, and make that the shortest point, and that would be the Mia Farrow. Okay? Then you would over direct your sections in. You're going to get some really nice disconnection through here to which you can point cut, and you won't have it all connected. It'll look really, really nice. Okay? With something like Joy, I don't want to go super short in the frame, so what I'm going to do is work more short to long and give it kind of like an effect that you can wear from side to side, okay? So, we're just going to work from short to long. You can see as well, I like to do things quite blunt, but you could also approach this with a texturizing technique if you want, okay? It's just a, a simple, straightforward approach to a shorter haircut, and I like having that as a base because I think, you know, with something like that, you can pretty much do almost anything you want. So now what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna start to pivot my sections just to give it a much more rounded feel. So I'm just gonna come in through here, and this will mainly just be to remove some of the length and weight and the really hot candy bits through the top, really. I'm going to connect and disconnect the sides at the same time. So it's going to be one area through the back where we'll pull them in. And we'll use this bias technique. This is just about getting to You can see that stuff there. Did you guys have fun yesterday? <clears throat> Did you guys do any heckling last night? <laughs> <laughs> it's tough to do that 
that stage work? Dark. Loud music. People watching. <laughs> It's also an addicting experience as well. Gratitude, I think, is also an addictive. And you can see when I'm doing this, I kind of stick to one side and I get joy to do all the moving. And I do that mainly just for like a efficiency in hand position. So you'll find that you know, on one side of the head, it makes it much easier to control a short to long. Sometimes you'll find that you'll jump on the other side, and you'll pick your section up. You'll try to do something like that, and cut back, and your palm starts to push into the hair. It's actually changing the angle of what you're doing. If you have the ability to very aggressively crack your client's head over, <laughs> and if they go limp, you've killed them officially. If you do it gently, it could really work for you. So just by tilting their head over, that was a good laugh. I got a laugh. It was a death joke. So that's <laughs> give it a very loose connection. And you, what you could also do is, um, you could do these in channels. I'm not going to, but you could do this type of technique where you go short to long, clip that section away, go short to long, short to long, short to long. And then you could have all these different corners here to which you could texturize or blend. Okay. So I'm gonna be taking these sections on a diagonal, working forward. Okay. We're just gonna pick up our shorter length just from the underneath of the parietal ridge. And then what you're trying to do is sort of connect and then just leave that little point of length through the very top area, okay? So again, you could go short to long, short to long, short to long. I've also done it on a guy, which is kind of, kind of quite cool. Okay. If you do this on um, like a bob and stuff, Make sure you over direct your sections back, otherwise, your client will look like uh, Dracula. <laughs> Not in a good way. And it's really short frames that will go right to a point like that, and it should crop them. I'm just going to pull these back until we run out. Okay. Please take the call now. way, take your section so you get thicker towards you, and then here we come away from ourselves. set and rest. 